Why didn't it beep? Make the beep. I need to hear the beep. Oh, because I turned the speakers off. All that was just recorded. So I, I'm sorry, Surface. You made the beep. It was my fault. Okay. Before we go on, I need to remind you of something that you already know. You have already done one form of factoring. Remember, we made the trees, right? So we could simplify radicals. What are factors? They're any two things multiplied together. Now, we have only used numbers, right? When I told you to take 18 and factor it, you went 9 and 2, 3 and 3, and you got 3 squared times 2 with 18, right? These are factors. And they are anything that is multiplied together. Is everyone good with that? So here I have this term, which happens to be a monomial, yes? And then I have this term which happens to be a binomial. When I multiply them together, I get 4x minus 20. Everybody's cool with that, yeah? These guys are the factors. This guy is the product. Is everybody cool? Right? Now, what is really happening to get this answer? What's really going on? I got time, don't worry. What is really happening there? How did we all know that 4x minus 20 was the answer? Because you told us. But seriously, how did you really know? Because all of you knew that was the answer, right? Okay, how? Because you're multiplying 4 times x, right? And then you are subtracting 4 times 5. And we know that to be distribution. Yeah? None of that's new words, right? Distribution gets you your answer. We also call distribution expansion. Those are the same thing. And how do, oh, that was an interesting one. Let's just do this. Nope, didn't come back. Those two are the same. Everybody cool? What math am I doing to, to my factors to get my product? What math is happening here and here? Multiply. We do distribution by multiplying. So if multiplying gets me a product, what gets me factors? Hmm? Division, right? If multiplying gets me a product, then logically, division of a product must get me factors. Everybody cool? Everybody good? Yes?
He waited expectantly. Everyone is okay with that, right? If you multiply to go in one direction, find an answer, then you must have to divide to go back the way you came. Cool? So what would I do? How would I do that? 4x minus 20. I would have to divide by something, wouldn't I? What would I divide by? 4, and I would get 4x minus 5, which you already know from the ninth grade. Sadly, in the ninth grade, we stopped there. Had we done one more lesson, you would know everything you would need to know for grade 10. None of this would be coming along as new to you. But grade 9, last year, ended there. Everybody good? So, what do I have here? Are these factors or a product? Those are factors. Why do you know that? Right, because this is a binomial. This is a binomial. And what are they doing with each other? They're multiplying. To get what? Remember, there's three ways to solve this. All of you are supposed to know one of them. This is an easy one to use the shortcut on, isn't it? Because it's x and x. So what's the answer? x squared plus 2x plus 4x plus 8. Oops. x squared plus 6x plus 8. Is everybody good to there? Yes? Okay. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is actual factoring. Now, in the last unit, when I said factor 12, what did that mean? Last unit. What did factor 12 mean? If I wanted you to find me the square root of 12, you had to factor it. What did that mean you had to do? Divide it down to what level? Pardon? The lowest ones. So this would have been 2 squared times 3, correct? Last unit. We would have made a factor tree. Cool? Everybody cool? Okay. In this unit, factor 12 means... Find factor pairs. What do I mean by that? All pairs of numbers that multiply to 12. So what are they? Remember, I do not want a product of primes. I don't want what you did last unit. I want pairs of numbers that multiply to 12. What are they? 3 times 4 is one pair. 2 times 6 is one pair. 1 times 12. I'm glad somebody remembered it. Does everybody understand? Is that all of the numbers that multiply together to make 12 in our universe? No. What else? Obviously, there are irrational numbers and, and fractions and things. Forget about them. I want integer pairs. You're right. You know what, Antonio? I'm going to change this. All pairs of integers that multiply to 12. 
So are there any other integers that will multiply to 12? Order doesn't count. Nobody can tell me another pair of numbers that will multiply to 12 other than those three. Pardon me? Uh-huh, but I've got three and four. I want other numbers. Thank you. It is also negative one and negative 12, isn't it? And it is also negative two and negative six. And it is also negative three and negative four. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah? Okay. Now let's start applying this to something. When I say factor this, that means this expression must have factors. And how do I find factors? Are they the answer or are they the question? Right here, this is what I'm talking about. There's that and that, which, let's change that color. Blue and green, which one are factors? Blue, that's the question, isn't it? So this must have factors because I'm asking you to factor it. How do we find our factors? How did you know that all of these were factors of 12? What math did you have to do to 12 to find the factors? No, divide. So I got to divide this to find its factors, don't I? Antonio. Right. So the reason I say to do this with a picture is because this is one of those times that it might help you, okay? If I draw six X's, everyone agree? And if I draw three little guys, can you see a way to split them into equal groups? And Antonio says, yeah, if I split that into groups of three and I split that into groups of three, what do I get here and here? Two X plus one. Does everyone see how it works with the picture? Will I test you on that? No, I only use it to show you that all you're doing is dividing every term by the same thing. Does everyone see that? I divided the x's into a group of three and I divided the single constant into a group of three. Is everybody cool? Now we've already used this concept. Since I divided, I had this term, 6x, and I had this term, 3, and I divided them both by 3. Is 3 common to both? Is 3 a factor of both? So that makes 3 the greatest common factor. And we have already dealt with that this year, haven't we? Last unit. The final answer is, I'll get to it in a sec. You all knew how to find the factors, right? Right? Okay. But the question doesn't say find the factors. The question says factor it, yeah? So if I'm going to factor it, I must take those two factors. They have to multiply together, right? So what are the two factors? You knew three was one of them, and this is the other one. So now we have factors. And if we were to distribute it, what would we get? 6x plus 3. Is everybody cool with that? It's something you already know how to do. Because if I told you, find me the common factor between 6x and 3, you could all do it, right? Because we've done that in the last unit. Everybody good? Okay. Turn the page over.
And I've got another one for you there. Now, it says to draw it. Do we need to draw it? No, but again, I am going to draw it. I draw this one first. I'll draw it in black. One, two, three, four. And this one I'll draw in red. One, two, three, four, five, six. What can I use to cut them into groups? You don't need to draw this if you're not ever going to draw them again, but it helps to see it. What can I chop this guy into? Two. I can divide that guy by two. Can I divide this guy by two? Yes. So I know that two is one of the factors of this binomial. What's the other one? What's in here? 2x squared, right? Plus 3x's. Does everyone agree? Everyone agrees? Okay. Now look at this. Do you see anything that is in both terms? There's an x. So that means x must be common to both, yeah? So that means I could also divide by x. Now we've seen this as well, haven't we? When we're doing square root, we take out groups, right? Where did those groups go when we took them out from under the radical sign? They went out to the front, correct? So where does this x go when I take it out of these brackets? Out to the front. There's already a 2 there. In radicals, we would multiply them together, wouldn't we? So what do we do here? We multiply them together, 2x. And what did we leave in the middle? This is exponent laws. We just did them. We left 2x plus 3. Does everybody see how it works? Okay, I'm going to write some stuff out now that you should do. First thing, one, this is called GCF factoring. And you should always do this any time you can. First, it's the first thing you should try, and any chance you have to do it, you do it. Cool? And this is how it works. Decide on the GCF. You already know how to find GCFs. You've done it already. Step three, divide every term by the GCF. Step four, rewrite like this. GCF bracket and then quotient. What's quotient? The answer when you divide, right? Quotient 1, plus or minus, quotient 2, plus or minus, quotient 3, and so on until you have it all done. Does everybody understand me? Every term. Is everyone cool with that? Okay, now listen to me. Normally I would go on right now, but in the last few years, there's been a lot of problems with factoring, which is really bad for further math. Higher level math really depends on factoring. So I'm going to stop with new stuff there. You're going to leave that bottom page. I think you have one more on page 107 there, yeah? 108. I want you to leave that bottom one alone, and I want you to turn on to page 109. 
because we're going to just live with GCF right now. So that should be 109 for you guys, right? Now, what did I just warn you about GCF? A couple of things. One, it's reverse distribution. Bell is about to ring. I'm stopping. I'm, we're done. Um, but we didn't get to your test. That's cool. We'll get to it tomorrow. Um,